Hello. In this session, we're going to review some of the initial settings and setup of a packet file or a PKT file. Within SubAssembly Composer, there's a few initial things before really getting in and laying out your subassembly. Uh, so as a reminder, let's look at the, uh, the subassembly we're going to use as an example moving forward. Uh, one of the first ones here is a sidewalk with a swale. Eight foot planter, five foot walk, two foot behind walk, um, road material, you know, concrete and sub base, and then a, a swell within that planter. So again, um, you could piece this together with several sub-assemblies within Civil 3D uh, or create this within Subassembly Composer, and this will give us some of the tools to move forward into more advanced Subassembly Composer design. So as we get into Subassembly Composer, we're going to first look at the input and output parameters, um, some of the main components of it and where you spend the bulk of your setup time in creating the, the parameters. So as you can see here for our subassembly, we have things like a swell width, a planter depth, uh, sub base depth, sidewalk depth, sidewalk slope, sidewalk width, and the back of the sidewalk width. So those type of things that we have to input into subassembly composer. So when we output that into Civil 3D and utilize that within Civil 3D, those parameters show within our properties. And you may notice here on the swell width, we have an overall width, uh, eight to 10 feet or whatever we want to put that in there. Uh, we can use formulas within subassembly composer, as we'll see soon, that give us a, a flow line. If we say, for example, a swell width divided by two, that will put that flow line centered within that swell width. Or we could simply define uh, a flow line width away from maybe the connection point or the sidewalk. Uh, we'll choose in this case to use a formula where we divide that swell width. So keep this in mind, this is the subassembly that we're going to build and these are the parameters that we're gonna input. So let's jump over to subassembly composer and get this thing started. Okay, and if we remember based on the user interface, uh, the packet settings are typically located there in the bottom right. Uh, so you've got three main tabs that we're gonna work with. We have the packet settings, input output parameters, and the target parameters. The initial one, pretty straightforward. We've got subassembly name, we're gonna name it. We're gonna give it a description. Uh, when we come back after we're done creating the subassembly, we're gonna give it a, a help file, just gonna path it to a Word doc and we're gonna put an image to it so we see what it is coming into Civil 3D. So let's do that first part. So here in the, the bottom right, packet settings, let's just go ahead and give this a name. And I'm just gonna call it sidewalk planter swell. And description, we're gonna call it uh, you know, five foot sidewalk with swell within planter, any description you want to give it there. So the first part, packet setting, very, very simple. Name it, give it a description. Again, we'll come back to help file and image. The input output parameters, this is what we're going to use to define our subassembly. So we always want to do this first. We can do it uh, as we go. Much easier to do it at the beginning before you get into building your subassembly. And these are the, the parameters that you will see when bringing it in into Civil 3D. And under the properties uh, tool palette, you'll see these listed. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, you've got a few columns here. You have name, type. Type could be um, you know, side, elevation, uh, integer, slope, surface, that type of type. On the direction, um, it's going to be input value. Default values, in this case, we're going to go left or right. Um, I'm going to do right, and you also have the option to do none. Okay. You can give it a display name and a description if you want to go that far, um, but these first four columns are the, the critical information. So to add more, and we're going to add uh, several in here, um, you just select create parameter. And I'm going to name it. Let's go planter width. Again, the type, you can see all the different types in there. This one, we're going to do a, a double. It's just a, um, a value. Direction is input. Default value for the planter width, I'm going to choose 8 feet. 
Okay, we're going to continue on. We're going to create another parameter. I'm going to call it planter depth. And that depth here, we're going to have uh, 6 inches or 0.5 feet. We're going to have our sidewalk width. And that sidewalk on the default value is going to be 5. Again, all those are variable that you can change within Civil 3D. I'm going to say sidewalk slope now. And this one, I'm going to show you something here. We're going to change the type from double to a grade. Grade is percentage. Slope would be like rise over run. So I'm going to change it to grade. And that grade, I'm going to use a default value of 2%. We also want a sidewalk depth. So a depth of concrete. And we're going to say 4 inches or 0.33. Our sidewalk is going to have some sub base. So I'm going to give this a sub base depth. And maybe that's a 6 inch sub base under that sidewalk. So I'm going to go with 0.5. Okay, so we have the parameters for our planter. We have our sidewalk, and I typically work left to right. So we've got planter, planter depth, sidewalk, sub base, and then we need the uh, planter area or the boulevard area behind the back of walk. So we're going to do the same here. I'm going to say back of walk width. And we're just going to do a default value of 2. Okay, so that's the first part. That's kind of the, the stuff that would sketch out. We would understand our, our subassembly that we're going for and, and give it all those parameters. Okay. So very simple, very straightforward. Sometimes you get, you know, 20 or so in here. Um, we'll see as we build this subassembly why these are so valuable. So I'm going to go to the target parameters. We've done with the, the packet settings. We're done with the input output. I'm going to go to target parameters. And I'm going to create a parameter here. You're limited to elevation, offset, and surface. So in this case, you know maybe you have a meandering sidewalk, or you have an existing sidewalk, or wants to be elevated based on an additional profile or feature line or something. We're going to have that set to um, an offset on the first one. So we're going to have it, uh, we'll say sidewalk offset. Offset, preview value, um, you don't have to put anything in there, so I'm going to leave it at zero. We just want that functionality, that target functionality within our subassembly. And then the second one, I'm going to do uh, the elevation. So I'm actually going to rename this sidewalk offset target. This one is going to be sidewalk elevation target. This will give us the ability within that subassembly to target elevation and offset. Okay, and so for most subassemblies, that's what uh, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have your packet settings. Let's just go back and review that. Packet settings: simple name, description, help file, image. Input output parameters: all the parameters, and that's going to help us define that subassembly. And then the target parameters, you know, some options in here where we can then target for width or elevation. So for this one, we're good. We're going to do a save as. I'm going to save this as our uh, subassembly. That way we can get going on building our, um, our subassembly. Uh, some of the items we'll look at in further downstream videos. Super elevation. You can apply a super elevation to some of these. And can't. So for the rail um, type projects, uh, you can apply can't to your subassembly, and then that gets applied in Civil 3D. Okay, so we're now ready to begin creating our first initial uh, subassembly in Subassembly Composer.